Welcome, everybody, to the Live Ultralight podcast powered by Outdoor Vitals. This podcast is about inspiring you to get outdoors, showing you how to lighten your pack and build your confidence so that you can start living your life full of adventure. On today's episode, we have here with us John Kelly. Uh, he is a backpacking YouTuber with over 12,000 subscribers, and he talks about gear and other backpacking tips and tricks to get you outdoors, uh, as well as, you know, he brings you on on trips with him uh, as he goes out into the backcountry. John Kelly, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, where are you based at? Uh, Central Kentucky. Uh, Lexington is kind of the dead center of the state. I live about 15 miles south of there. So just a hop, skip and a jump from Lexington, Kentucky. And what's the what's the backpacking? Mm, what 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 is backpacking like over in Kentucky? Oh, man, we got some great areas. We've got the Red River Gorge, which is an hour and a half from where I live. I could be there. Like I'll be going there probably sometime later this week just to hang out for a little while uh we've got the big south fork which is just south maybe a couple hours um we got the smoky mountains which is another hour south of there so we got some we got some cool locations that aren't very far away at all awesome did you grow up uh, over in kentucky or no actually I've, my dad was a preacher so i grew up in like upstate new york northern ohio and moved to kentucky after my senior year of high school so Okay, yeah, so well, I, I'm around. detecting a bit of a draw. Where is maybe, <laughs> maybe. See, it's funny down here. They all say Was I sound like adapted? a Yankee. Yeah, every oh, down yeah. here, I'm a Yankee. Up in the north, I'm a hillbilly. So I don't really have a win here. Like well, I'm just kind of stuck in the middle somewhere. Well, I'm out here in the west, so we have our own kind of like I don't know. Everything <laughs> back east is different. But everything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I I I can detect a draw. I, I definitely thought you were from the south when I when I was listening to it, but you know, I guess when you're down there, you can tell maybe their ears are just a little bit more fine tuned. Eh, probably. <laughs> yeah. Probably. <laughs> well, where's your dad from? Uh, Southern Ohio. Okay. So that doesn't, just, okay. just North of Cincinnati, just North right. of Cincinnati. I bet you adopted just a little bit of an accent. Well, my mom is from the mountains of Virginia. So uh, we grew up with it. my mom's accent my whole life. She was very Appalachian. I so, think that's it then. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry to those who actually are from the South and are screaming at me right now. Well, if, if you ever watch, <laughs> if you ever get a chance to hear our podcast, I do the backpacking podcast with Jeremiah Stringer. That's an accent. Yeah. I sound like I'm from upstate New York when you hear Jeremiah talking. There's, <laughs> these are two completely different accents. I promise. It's hilarious. Um, was, so you grew up, uh, living with your father as a preacher. Did you do much outdoor stuff? Yeah, I was in Boy Scouts when I was a kid. Okay. Um, so I did a lot of camping and hanging out in the woods. It seemed like everywhere we lived, there were woods to play in. So lots of fishing, lots of just getting lost, you nice. know, growing up. Yeah, I did. I did Boy Scouts too. Are you an Eagle Scout or what? I didn't make it that far. See, when I was no? in New York, right. it was cool. When I got to Ohio, it wasn't cool anymore. Nobody did it. So it was ah. like, I didn't want to be a dork. I didn't want to be a dork. So I quit Boy Scouts. Oh, well. and I regret it because I loved Boy Scouts, but no, none of the kids I knew were in it. So it was really different culture. Yeah, I guess that's kind of sad. Um, yeah, I grew up with the Boy Scouts and obviously Boy Scouts popularity has gone up and down throughout the year. But I think it was honestly like I would have not spent nearly as much time outdoors in my life if it weren't for the Boy Scouts. Like that's about half of yeah. my backpacking camping trips. Um, plus like the people that I got to know, uh, through the Boy Scouts is really awesome. I actually worked at a Boy Scout camp for a couple summers and oh, that's cool. was able to take, like, I was like 19, 18. I would take all the scouts up the mountain once a week to do like the over, like the wilderness survival overnighter. And they would have to make their shelters out of, you know, whatever was around. It was a, it was a blast. I really Sounds like, like it. Yeah. I love the scouts, but, uh, I loved, uh, I loved, uh, doing the scouts when, when I was growing up. Um, so growing up outdoors was a bit of a part of your life, but how has it changed? Like how old are you now? I'm 48, You're 48. Okay. You don't yes. look 48, by the way. You look I, I get that a lot. I definitely get that a lot. 
I think it's the beard. I think that helps. It may be, maybe <laughs> and it's not, and it's not white yet. So no, yeah, yeah. That's all my buddies point. that are my age and have beards. They don't have bl- brown beards. Theirs are very white. So as you, so over the years then, how has your relationship to the outdoors changed over time? Okay. Back in 2015, this is, this is when it all kind of kicked in it was 2015. Um, I mean, I'd done, I'd gone and done some things here and there and camped out, but not really took it seriously. Uh, but a buddy of mine, he, uh, he calls me up and he goes, I want to get lunch with you. Cause I want you to go on an adventure with me. And I'm like, okay, let me explain this guy's adventures. Mm-hmm. He biked the transcontinental route, which is the, from Virginia to, or Oregon to Virginia. Wow. He biked that. He ran from, he did, he did a hundred marathons in a hundred days from Los Angeles to New York city. He swam what? across Lake Michigan. He hiked the Appalachian Trail. He hiked across the width of the United States. This guy was insane. His idea of an adventure was not my kind of an idea of an adventure. And he calls me up and says, I want to do an adventure with you. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I hope there's a free lunch, you know, because like, I don't know what's going to happen here. And so we get together and uh, he tells me he wants me to hike Mount Kilimanjaro with him. And I'm like, my comment to him was actually, uh, fat guys don't climb mountains. <laughs> and uh, he just laughed at me and he, he goes, well, then stop being fat. And so he just kind of threw the challenge out there and I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it. And we did it to raise money to build wells in Africa. So the whole thing was to help other people out. Uh, and there were 16 of us that went. I think we raised somewhere around $115,000 to build wells in Africa. And uh that was where it all really like, that's where the passion for it kicked in. Cause I started hiking to prepare for that. So I fell in love with hiking and then we did the trip and I was kind of like, man, this, this hiking and then camping out overnight and then hiking again. I was like, why have I not done this more? And then I got done with that and just kind of did some little trips here and there. And a buddy of mine and I decided to do the Sheltoe trace, which is a 323 mile trail here uh, between Tennessee and Kentucky. And it's just all, it's just all been downhill from there, man. <laughs> just that's downhill when it all fell apart. Uh, nope. That's when the addiction started, and I can't stop now. So okay, you gotta break down this Kilimanjaro trip because I, okay. I, I'm interested. In, okay, how do you <laughs> raise money by hiking? That's okay. Interesting. There was a there's a company called Life Water, and they build wells oh, okay. yeah. in communities and everything. And I think so we work with them at, at Outdoor Vitals. Yeah, they're fantastic, and uh, so we um. We partnered, we were partnered with them. And so each of us got our own like fundraising website. And then basically what we did was we just told people, Hey, we're going to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. We're doing this for this cause. Here's what we're trying to do. And uh, each of us had to raise $6,000 a piece. And I remember when I met with Darren, he said, here's the catch with the 6,000 though. When you sign and say that you're going to raise $6,000, if you don't raise $6,000, you're putting your bank account information in here. And we're getting $6,000 regardless. And you have to commit to that money. And that's not the cost of the hike. I mean, altogether, it was a lot more than that. Um, but we had to raise money for, for them. And uh, long story short, man, when you've got that kind of pressure, it's amazing how much fundraising you can actually do. <laughs> I, I think when all was said and done, I raised around $8,000, almost $9,000. Oh. Um, but it was, it was a lot of fun, man. It was a lot of fun. And how was the hike? Oh my gosh. It, what stinks is I tell people all the time, I said, when you're, when you're standing at the top of the highest freestanding mountain in the world, it's, it's hard to beat that on the rest of your hiking trips. So, uh, but it was, it was awesome. It was five and a half days up and a day and a half down. Um, Cause you know, you know, with elevation, we had to uh, acclimatize as we were going up there. And so we'd get to a certain height and we'd stay there for the day spend the night and then we go up a little bit more and then come down a little bit. And, uh, cause at the end of the day, it was over 19,000 feet when we got to the top. Oh so, yeah. And you're out in Kentucky. That'd be, <laughs> yeah, we've, I, I think, I think Kentucky, like where I'm at right now is about a thousand feet above the ground, above uh, sea level right yeah, now. Yeah. That, that'd be rough. So, that'd be rough. <laughs> so well, funny story about that though. Funny story about that. I had to train, you know, I was training for elevation. So I got an elevation mask. So I could just limit my, my oxygen. And when you wear it, you look like Bane from the Batman movies. Mm-hmm. 
And so I would at night, I would always go to work, do my thing. Then my wife would go to bed. That's when I would go for long. I just take long walks. I'd walk five to eight miles and I would put this Bane mask on with a big black backpack and just walk up and down the streets at like 10 o'clock at night. And so people oh, wow. were like kind of freaked out. And uh, one day, one night I'm walking and this police officer pulls up beside me and has their blue lights on. And I'm like, what is going on? And he goes, um, sir, what are you doing? And, and I was just like, I'm training for this hike from Mount Kilimanjaro. I told him what was going on. Said, oh, that's awesome. I was like, yeah. He goes, we've gotten six phone calls tonight about this strange man walking around the neighborhood with a mask on. Uh. <laughs> now, it, now, today, wearing a mask isn't going to surprise anybody, right? Because of the because of everything that's happened in the last two years, but back right. then in two thousand was that two thousand sixteen, people were freaked out. Yeah. So uh, it was just really funny. Really I didn't funny. Even know, uh, you know, it shows shows my ignorance. I didn't know that was like a thing that you could train at high elevation by like yeah, it's your a, oxygen. Yeah, it's just a mask that you put on, and it's got different regulators that you can you can put on it, and they limit how much oxygen actually gets into the mask wow and so uh you can you can set it for the different elevations and uh so i trained at about i think i set mine for 20 because i know i was going to be above 19 so i figured if i trained at 20 i'd be okay man it was brutal sometimes yeah. there were times you just had to take the mask off and breathe i but, uh, i can imagine <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i mean it, i assumed it helped you made it up the mountain so yeah, I did. I, I did a lot of study, just did a lot of study. Um, Backpacker Magazine had actually come out with an article about how to handle elevation sickness. And it was like two months before I left. And so I basically did everything it said, like to the T. And uh, I was one of the few people on our group that didn't get any elevation sickness. I got a touch of a headache at the summit and that was it. Yeah, I, I so. deal. I've dealt with elevation sickness. We've been... Uh, talking about it at the office here uh, with Tayson and, and Brigham will actually have a podcast out. They have some, uh, I guess they, they have some kind of guidelines in, in dealing with it, but I have gone about the, the two high elevation climbs that I've ever attempted. And they were not even nearly as high as Mount Kilimanjaro. <laughs> it's like King's Peak here in Utah, which is like 13, five. It's still tall. That's and still then, really high. And then Mount Albert, um, yeah. which is above 14,000 feet. Both times I got like a quarter mile from the top and got violently sick. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. No, so I didn't summit either of them. I just like got there, got sick, walked back down and tried to because I got sick on King's Peak. I was like, okay, Mount Albert, I'm going to go there for a few days and acclimatize to, uh, you know, over 10,000 feet, which is where the campsite is. Didn't help. Didn't oh, help anyway. man. But I didn't get much sleep. There's a whole bunch of things that like could have contributed, but maybe I'll have to buy one of those masks and just like start depriving myself. <laughs> <laughs> Teach yourself not to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, it was it, our whole, there were 16 of us that went on that trip that were on that trip. All 16 made it to the summit. Um, wow. Different people. Like, we had one guy that got violently sick one day, but his body adjusted. And by the time it was uh summit day, he was better. Um, and then, uh, gosh, we had a lady who was, I think 69 years old and she had broken her wrist a month or two before the trip and she made it all the way up. Wow. So I keep telling people a fat guy and a 69 year old woman made it up to the top of Kilimanjaro. Nobody else has excuses at they this point. They can do it. You can do it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, so when did you decide to start a YouTube channel about backpacking and uh, you were talking about your podcast earlier? When did you decide to go about doing that? It's fun. It's a funny story. Actually, I um when I did sh the Shell Toey Trace, I again partnered with uh, LifeWater. And uh, this time it wasn't as heavy of a commitment. It was just me and a buddy who uh, who's another backpacker. And we decided to do this to see if we could raise some money to help out. And uh, all I was doing was vlogging the trail for people who were supporting me. There was no real, there was no real plan to do a YouTube channel. I just mm -hmm. created this channel called it JK is hiking because I'm JK and I was hiking and uh, the videos were terrible. I'm just going to shoot straight. Like I tried, I was trying to be like Darwin or something, you know, I'm like trying to have the really good music. It was, they were garbage. And, uh, but in one of the videos I'm, I'm hiking along and 
I made the statement that I'm a real backpacker now because I just pooped in the woods. And uh, Dan Becker, of all people, he was, I think, a thousand or two thousand subscribers at the time. Oh, wow. He saw the video and he thought it was hilarious. And he, he left a comment and uh, which I thought was cool because I've been watching his channel and I was like, I was kind of a little bit of a fan of his. And uh, later on, I was on Facebook and a friend of mine and him were friends in common. I found out that Dan lived in Kenosha, Wisconsin. I used to live in Kenosha, Wisconsin for four years. And we had a friend in common. So I was like, I'm just going to shoot him a message. And so I shot Dan a message. Hey, how do you know so-and-so? And And that immediately, I mean, it wasn't even like 30 seconds. He responded and we started chatting. Then he gave me his phone number. We talked for an hour on the phone. Um, And he's the one that, in all honesty, he's the one that convinced me I needed to start a YouTube channel. I wasn't even going to start one. Um, I was going to do the shell toy trace and be done. Cause I was like, when I was talking to Dan, I think I had 30 subscribers if a video got a hundred views, I was over the moon freaking out, you know? And uh, Dan just kind of convinced me and helped me out. When I put out my first video, he made sure he put something about it on his channel and just kind of went from there. So really the channel wasn't something I planned on. It's just something that kind of happened. How long have you been doing this? Uh, The channel started in 2019. I mean, the first time I actually did anything was 2019. The trail videos were like in 2018, but uh, when I actually took it seriously, it was in 2019. Okay. So, yeah, Dan's blown up since then for sure. A little bit. Just a yeah. little bit. <laughs> we, uh, we went on I wish, a... he had, I wish he had more personality. That's the only oh, thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we went on a camping trip with, uh, with him. We went on a little backpacking trip a few months ago, so I got to meet him. Oh, he's a fun uh, guy. He is a fun guy. He's, he's a lot of fun. He's always uh, in a chipper mood. Um, I got to like talk shop with this camera guy over there. So that was nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. We had a good time with Dan. So it's cool. Everybody's intermingling here. Uh, well, and it's funny with that too, because Dan then gives me Jeremiah Stringer's phone number. And he says, call Jeremiah up. And I'm like freaking out at this point. Cause like, these are two of the guys I watched on YouTube all the time was Jeremiah and Dan. So I, I called Jeremiah and he goes, Hey, I can't talk right now, but I'm driving down to Nashville. Cause I'm going to do the long trail. Um, so give me a call and we'll talk while I'm driving to the airport. And I'm like, okay, we ended up talking the entire ride down to the airport, like the entire three hours. And, uh, then we started, we, we did a couple trips together and decided to do a podcast and yeah, so it's all this, like just everybody kind of knows each other. The outdoor community is not that big in all honesty. It's amazing how intermingling and everything is. I think it's it's bigger than we think it is, but I'm wondering how many people are both like outdoorsy and also creative in in the way in which they want to make a video and spend hours and hours. That's true. Yeah, that's building, true. Building that kind of content. So I was definitely like I enjoy backpacking. I grew up in scouting. I have attempted a through hike that I failed miserably on. Um, which one was it? It was like the Bonneville Trail. It's just a trail that like skirts um, the Wasatch Front of Northern Utah. It's like yeah, okay, it's like two hundred miles long. I was three hundred pounds when I started that thing, uh, and I lasted about two days. Uh, Oh wow! (laughs) And it was how much weight have you lost then? A hundred pounds. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Uh, It wasn't mostly. It was mostly diet. It wasn't hiking. I, I wish that hiking. Who cares how you lost it, man? I'm just, I'm impressed that you lost a hundred pounds. That's incredible. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. It's been many years. It's been very slowly lost over yeah. time. Uh, but that was like the beginning of it. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to start this hike and I'm going to start my weight loss journey. Cause I had ballooned up to some like 300 pounds. Right. And for yeah. me, I'm a pretty short guy. That's legitimately like huge. I weighed um, 305 pounds two years ago. So I get you, man. Yeah, I totally get you. I gained, I gained a bunch of weight when COVID happened. Uh, um, I, I gained a little, I gained on a little. weight. Yeah. Yeah. It's difficult not to with COVID. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, I was, I, I was hired here as an entertainer. I, I do podcasts and then I also make videos. Like I, I'm first I have like a filmmaker. So I've made like short films and a whole bunch of stuff. And like, I enjoy backpacking. I'm learning so much backpacking stuff so it's quite the opposite for me like the, the people who are doing really well on youtube like you or dan all these like backpacking guys they are i think backpackers first and then youtube is second almost well it's funny i i actually work at a church and i've been doing videos for years there you go um so but you i was crossover. doing 
bad videos for years. <laughs> and so doing the YouTube channels actually taught me so much. Like I started out, I was using a flip camera. You know, the flip cameras from back in the day. Did you ever uh, see those? Man, they have, they literally were just, used one. they were a little like rectangle with a camera lens on it, basically and a button. And then you had a USB port that would pop out the side. And that was the video camera. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's what, that's what I started working on that. And I had a Sony cyber shot, like little camera. And those were the things that I filmed stuff on. They were terrible. Everything looked awful. And then when I decided I was going to do YouTube, I had a buddy who was a photographer and I was like, okay, fill me in. Tell me what I need to know. Cause I, I know nothing. Like I hear words like ISO and F stop <laughs> and I'm going, I don't know what any of this stuff is. And so I had a buddy taught me all that stuff, explain lighting to me and sound. And it was just, just kind of got lucky. I had the right people around me to help me out with it. Cause I look at some of my early videos and I just cringe, you know, the GoPro trail videos were pretty rough. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like, obviously like your background's way cooler than mine. I'm just like here in my apartment, quickly set this up. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm covering up all the video game stuff behind me, so it looks a little bit more backpacky. But uh, like, I see like your like your red lighting there with all the 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 backpacking supplies behind you. I think that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool setup, and I like the way your videos look a, a lot when you're filming in your garage. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know what's funny is it's in my garage. Like yeah. it's amazing how many people like I've got. I've got this brick wall thing I drop down, you know, just so I have a different background every once in a while. <laughs> people are like, where are you with that brick wall? I'm thinking to myself, oh, here it comes. I'm a, they're going to find out I'm a big fake <laughs> and it's a fake brick wall, you know, but. Uh, I started at Outdoor Vitals. They have like this wood panel wall. Yeah. If anybody's listening who's watched the, the YouTube videos, it's just, just like this wood panel. It took me months to figure out how to light in that room just because it's just a blank wood panel and yeah. the wood slats are not level with the floor. So I can't like level the camera off and the wood <laughs> slats. So I always have to go in and like crop it. And then there was always a bunch of junk in the room. I just barely cleared this stuff out. So he's always had to be like up against the wall. So it was like this really bright thing. Uh, if you see the videos in like the and you got flight, shadows directly behind them because you're too close to the wall. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's a whole bunch. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of problems with like yeah. lighting in that space. they they love this, this wood slat thing. And I came into work for them and I'm like, I hate this wood slat. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> so like I tried like just like putting a bunch of like you know a bunch of outdoor vitals like backpacks and stuff and it just like looked messy and I'm like I can't figure this out what I I had to figure like literally in like the last three weeks have I figured out how to light in that stupid space <laughs> like you'll see oh, that's the, awesome the brand new videos like Tayson's gonna be way far away from that wall so that the light is just like kind of falling onto the wall, but not lighting it so that Tayson is much brighter than the background. It's like, oh my goodness. But I had to like pull a whole bunch of stuff out of the room and, and oh, everything yeah. in order to get that thing to like look the way where I was like, okay, this looks like I, I might be a professional. I might know what I'm doing. It's not just, uh, I, 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 <laughs> it's a whole bunch of, <laughs> whole bunch of, whole bunch of fun stuff, uh, with, uh, with figuring out how to, I guess, film. <laughs> yeah. I, I hear that. Um, so, uh, what are your future backpacking plans at this moment Honestly, in time? Um, the, the big one this year is, uh, me and a buddy are going to be doing the Virginia triple crown, um, hitting three of the big spots along the AT, which is dragon's tooth, tinker cliffs and McAfee knob. Um, it's like, uh, it's, it's not a huge long hike or anything, but it's just a really cool hike. It's like 36 miles, I think. Um, we're going to do that one weekend and then it's just kind of open. I'm going to be down in the, uh, Linville Gorge in North Carolina at some point in the spring. I got a buddy. We're going to be getting together to hike down there. I'll be doing a ton of stuff in the Red River Gorge. Um, when you got something like that nearby, it's just, you take advantage of it. So, uh, be doing a lot there. I, I try to get into at least five different States a year. So that's always my goal is five States. I barely got it in last year. Um, but this year I really want to get out West. I've never hiked out West. Never. And I really want to No, I need to get out to Utah, California, Colorado. Oh yeah. I, I really want to get out there. It's yeah. a lot. It's quite different. Uh, more, I would say rocky and rugged, more bare and also way higher elevation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So you got to be ready with your, you got to get your oxygen uh, uh, depriving. It'll be nice not device. having the Kentucky humidity though, man. <laughs> you've never well, experienced humidity till you've experienced humidity in the South, man. It's uh, unreal. I can attest to that. I have family in the South. I've gone visiting quite a bit, but uh, there's also the opposite where after you're used to some humidity, you come out to specifically Utah and Nevada and Colorado, like really dry states. You go out there and it just feels like the moisture has been like sucked away from your skin. <laughs> and so it's... <laughs> I look forward to trying that. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll just be, I don't know, you might feel like dried out, like you're just like roasting in the sun. Even though I think actually like, I don't even, I don't even know if, if the feeling of like being burnt by the sun is necessary. I'm a redhead, so I have to worry about this. Oh, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if it's nearly like, if it actually matters whether or not you know, there's humidity in the air. I've heard like more water in the air basically like amplifies the light, but I don't know. Oh, wow. I don't not. know about that, but I, that, that can but work. I have no idea, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you might, you might feel like, I don't know, like a fried piece of bacon out here. It, yeah. Who knows? One of the, I just want, I know the desert just really looks interesting. And I want to do, um, uh, I want to do the, uh, oh, what is it called? I hate it when I think of a, of the name of a trail I want to do. It's in Utah. Um, got the Daffa. High Line. You went to the high. Highline. You went to you went to High Line Trail. Yeah, that's the one I would like to check out. You went to High Line Trail. Yeah. Um, the guys tried it last year. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they they made it a good chunk of the way in, and then got snowed out, and then had to had to leave. Got oh, snowed no. out in the middle of August. Uh, snowstorm. You don't get out. that in Kentucky, man. We don't. We don't even get snowed out in February in Kentucky. So it's pretty rare here, uh, unless you're in the really high elevation, which that's kind of the kind of the highest elevation area in Utah is the Uintas. Yeah, it's, it's going to be more common in in Colorado or something like that. Those freak winter storms in the middle of summer. Oh, I know. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, poor guys. I think they are going to try to attempt it again. I will. I will not say they are definitely going to do so uh, on a podcast, but uh, I will say that there are a lot of rumblings in the office about giving it another go uh, on the awesome. Utah Highline Trail. So that's awesome. Yeah, uh, it looks like an amazing experience. I've gone and hiked up in the Uintas a little bit, obviously with King's Peak, but and it's it's a it's really cool up there. Like it's an amazing just. The, the views are incredible. Um, really cool area. What, um, what are your favorite backpacking trips? Um, what, what, when I ask you your favorite backpacking trip outside of Mount Kilimanjaro, let's say we already covered that one. Um, what first pops into your head? I have, a, it's, it's not going to sound like one that most people would think of, but I went down to Alabama and, and hiked out there and I think because I was so shocked by it is why I like is why I think about it. But uh, got to hike part of the Pinhoti Trail down there on Chiaha Mountain, and uh, it was just a really cool hike. I when I think of Alabama, all I think of is humidity and hot and tornadoes. So <laughs> like I don't think of I don't think of mountains and views and vistas and waterfalls. But that's exactly what I saw, and it was really a cool hike. Um, it wasn't like a big long thing. It was only three days, but um, it was just a good trip. And then another one would be Pictured Rocks up in Michigan. I went up there this past year and got to do that. It's like a 45, I think it's 45 miles. Um, and we, we took our time with that. I think we did it over like five days. Um, but the views out there are insane. I mean, you're over Lake Superior and it's these, the water was like this perfect like blue green color. And you could see straight through to the rocks at the bottom of it. And, uh, I mean, it's just a perfect, it was picturesque. Like nobody ever gets to hike it in that kind of weather. Usually everybody talks about the black flies and the humidity and it's, it's awful, but it's beautiful. And we had the beauty and the good weather and no black flies. So uh, it was did, awesome. Sorry. When did, what season did you go down there? Like when did you go we went down there in May last year? May. Okay. So, so that's up in the upper peninsula. So that's like practically Canada. Okay. So uh, you're probably like flies are probably a few weeks behind yeah i think so i think you're right i think they start i think they i think people were complaining about them the week after we were there which is really funny i assume like may i've never hiked up that far north i assume may is probably pretty like chilly it wasn't bad i mean no? i think it i think it got up to around 
might've gone up to around 70 during the day. I think the coldest it ever got okay. was in the forties. It wasn't terrible. Okay. Yeah. That's not a bad range. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's cool. Um, what, uh, do you have any bucket list trips? Like, do you ever want to like try the AT or anything like that? If I try the AT, it'll have to be after my kids are out of the house and my wife's yeah. tired of me. Um, <laughs> so Good that I, I would like to, I would love to do it. I, I don't know if, if I, if I could do six months, I'd probably have to do like, uh, like a month or two and then do it the next year, do a month or two or something like so that. I don't know if it. I'd be able to do six. I, of course it doesn't always take every six months either. A lot of people, it's like four or five months, but what I'm just assuming the longer, but uh, I want to do the John Muir trail really bad. I want to do the John Muir trail. That's, that's one I definitely want to hit up. Um, I definitely, I really would like to hit the UN a high Highline trail. Um, I got to watch a, a movie about that not long ago, a couple of years ago. And ever since seeing that movie, it's just kind of like, I really would like to do that trail. Is that the, uh, um, the one that just, just called Highline? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They made me watch it when I started working here. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually got to talk to the director of, cool. of the movie and super nice guy. And, uh, but yeah, I'd love to do that. Um, I would like to do the long trail up in Vermont, the original long trail. Um, yeah, there's, and there's a bunch of other little trails here and there I'd like to do, but those three would probably be three of the big ones I'd like to do. Awesome. Yeah. I want to do the John Muir as well. Um, I don't know what the situation is like permit situation or anything like that over, over in, uh, California. Yeah, isn't it kind of like, like a lottery thing or something or <sighs> must, be, it probably is just because like in that state, when something's popular, it's just like, you gotta, you gotta wait, you gotta wait yeah. it out. Um, but, uh, where, uh, so tell me, um, John, where can people find you? Uh, I mean, you can find content. me on YouTube, uh, youtube.com slash I think it's JK is hiking. And then I'm on Instagram, John Kelly, YouTube. Um, and it's K E L L E Y, which is important. Cause if you don't spell that, you won't find me. Um, the backpacking podcast, you can always find me on the backpacking podcast. Um, and, uh, those are probably the best ways that you can find me online. Awesome. Well, thank you, John, for making time and, and coming on here. Sorry, Tayson couldn't join us today. Um, That's okay, man. I'll just take it personally. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you, you know, coming here and talking with me. Um, yeah, man. No, it's all good. It's been fun. And uh, guys, if you have any comments, questions about backpacking, cool outdoor stories, or ideas for future episode topics, um, we might just read it on the show. And you can send those to liveultralightpodcast at gmail.com or you can comment on our uh, little budding YouTube channel, uh, Live Ultra Light Podcast on YouTube. Uh, and uh, also, we will read your positive iTunes reviews uh, that you that you um, submit there. Um, so if you could do that, that'd be awesome. And uh, guys, links to all of Outdoor Vitals, awesome ultralight backpacking gear will be in the description of this podcast and in the description of the YouTube videos. Guys, uh, thank you once again for joining, and we will see you on the trail.